So I've been using my Alienware Aurora R8 now for about a week with the K666 CPU cooler uh, from the last uh, video that I put out. Uh, that was the small tower cooler. So And it's been incredibly loud, so I figured that I might as well try uh, installing either the K555 or uh, try with the uh, EVGA water cooler here. So I've got a couple of options. Since I have them, might as well try them. So the plan is that we're going to, uh, we'll try both of these, we'll put them into the computer, we'll run some benchmarks, we'll see what happens, uh, and then we'll choose the one that's either the quietest or the best fitting, or the one I like the most. And for testing this, because I still don't want to pull off the top cover on that computer, uh, what we'll end up doing probably is just attaching this on top of the CPU, getting it screwed down, and then we'll just let the, uh, the water block hang at the side. So if that works, that's the plan. If not, then we will get that properly installed. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll run some benchmarks and we'll be able to compare these head to head with, again, the original CPU cooler, the K666 that I have right now, the K555, and the EVGA water cooler. So we'll have a spread of everything I've found that can dissipate 95 watts or more, and we'll put them all head to head. Now let's get a current baseline in Cinebench R20 with the K666 cooler installed. Okay, well we got 3407, that's pretty good. Let's shut down and we'll try the other one. Now we'll pull the K666 cooler and we'll install the K555. Feel bad installing so many heat sinks on here, but I gotta find the one that works. If it weren't for this power supply, we just have a nice beefy tower. You can see, I guess, edge of fastener to edge of fastener. We're quite a bit taller on this one than we are on that. Wow, we are really, really, really close to the VRM there. So you can see there's almost zero clearance. So we got very close. It looks like we actually may be over, going to be really close to the RAM on that side. So maybe we should turn it. That leaves quite a bit more clearance there. Let's just see if it closes comfortably. Ooh. That is not going to work. So the other one we could close without too much issue. This one on the other hand. See that just goes nice and easy. See we're about a fan thickness difference there. Since the K555 cooler didn't fit due to the clearance with the power supply, even though the gap should have been to U2 server rack spec and the cooler was designed for a U2 server rack, We'll try using the EVGA cooler and see if that works better. Okay, so here we have the EVGA closed loop CPU cooler. Uh, give it a shot here. In here we've got a water block with thermal paste. It looks like a little dollop pre-applied. Again, these hoses are very, very flexible. So that was the goal in getting this. Uh, we got some mounting brackets, which we shouldn't need since we already have those. And then, in theory, we'll have to see how the fan mounts, but we may be able to use the existing fan because it is much, much more powerful. But for starters, we'll hook up that guy. There we go. Now we're nice and square. Uh, and then, these should be our screws here. And then we got some more screws for the radiator. Okay, so it looks like we got fasteners for AMD and Intel in here. Fan blade side out. Okay, so we're pushing air through. Makes sense. So in the event that we fall in love with this, we will put it in the right way from the get-go. So it'll end up having to go like such. So we'll save this as overclock 3. So let's hit run again and see what happens. But again, I think we were hitting 
the other as well. So I know that when we did this a couple of days ago, we were hitting 30, 3300. Okay, so now we had 3460. That's a lot better. I'll put up a quick clip of this under synthetic benchmarking and we'll get some uh, head to head comparison between this and the K666 so you can see exactly how much quieter this one actually is. Ultimately, I think this is probably going to be the best deal. Uh, but again, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more searching to see if we can find one of these that has a 4-pin for PWM. Uh, and so hopefully we can find something that might be a little bit better. But I think this really does check most of our boxes. Thanks for watching, and come back soon. I should have some more videos up next week.